uh, meeting of the MARTA Oversight Committee. Uh, we'll call this a, a uh, moving the ball forward meeting. Um, we uh, have three items on today's agenda. Uh, one is that uh, MARTA shared some information uh, kind of generally and generically with us last time about uh, some cost savings in the, uh, that they have achieved in the information technology um, uh, uh, part of their operations, and uh, we uh, very much would like to hear about that in greater detail. Um, so that is item number one on the agenda today. Um, an item number, uh, item number two, which uh, has uh, been on Marta's wish list for some time, um, and is something that uh, we'd like to explore, uh, is uh, the the issue of uh, Medicaid uh, uh, dumping of. of uh, uh, providers using uh, the, um, I, 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 that's perhaps not the best term for it, but uh, 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 medical providers using uh, the uh, very expensive uh, mobility service, uh, paratransit service to, um, uh, uh, to uh, 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 for patients uh, who are on Medicaid and, and MARTA not uh, getting uh, 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 much of a benefit out of that at all, uh, and uh, I think uh, certainly uh, uh, figuring out uh, ways that uh, we can can help Marta in that regard, I think, is is a worthwhile endeavor. So we'll talk about that issue uh, as the uh, as the second item on our agenda, and then the third on, item on the agenda is a presentation of the ATLTransit.org uh, website. This is the website that uh, Greta and uh, ARC uh, and uh, the transit providers, uh, but uh, primarily Greta and ARC, uh, have been working and putting together uh, at uh, the, uh, uh, and this was the, the project that started with Senator Beach. Uh, they put together a pretty good product. Uh, Representative Riley and I have had a chance to uh, take a look at it and, and uh, before it went uh, live, and now it's live, and they've been developing it uh, and fine-tuning it since then, and so that's also uh, something we'd, uh, we'd like to see a demonstration of and give the committee an opportunity uh, to take a look at. So uh, all of that being said, uh, I don't know who's uh, first up, but we're going to cover the IT cost savings uh, piece first. Uh, we'll call on the uh, general manager, Keith Parker. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and other members of the committee. We do have two presentations for you uh, that, that we wanted to bring some additional information uh, for, for your consideration. The first will be presented by our newly minted Chief Information Officer, Ms. Ming Si. She started as Chief Information Officer back in March. She's been with MARTA for about 12 years. And she's going to step through some of the things we did to recognize some of the cost savings. But I believe of course, what's going to be even greater interest to you are some of the really neat projects that we've got uh, underway. We were featured on a front of the Metro section article today about our new video analytics program. Uh, which we're very, very excited about. Uh, the second presentation will be by Knox O'Callaghan, and Knox has actually been with MARTA for almost three decades as our Director of Grants Management, and he's going to talk to you about the uh, efforts that we have underway to hopefully bring some reduction in the overall cost for our paratransit services by looking at a uh, tweak in the language that governs our relationship with uh, some of the private providers. So with that, I will bring Ms. C up, and she uh, will give you, we'll start running you through the uh, IT presentation. Ms. C, welcome. Thank you. Good afternoon, Chairman uh, Jacob and the committee members. Thank you for the opportunity today um, to present to you the technology cost savings for the last year. And we're going to touch a little bit about some of our achievements for the last 12 months and uh, some uh, really exciting project initiative underway. Um, just Taking the time back to last summer, um, in June 2013, Mr. Parker hired uh, MARTA's uh, former Chief Information Officer, Sean Duna, as the Interim Chief Information Officer. Under the leadership of uh, Mr. Parker and Ms. Duna, uh, IT started processing of assessing, align, and improving to achieve cost savings, efficiency, and customer service. By assessing where we are and where we need to be, we aligned the technology resource to business needs and improve our operations and delivery to internal customer and to the riding public. 
We want to achieve the, the financial viability by reducing technology capital and operating costs, <laughs> and also through innovation to achieve organization efficiency and a better customer experience. So during the initial assessment, we um, uh, categorized all the results into three um, areas. In the financial area, what we discovered in summer 2013 is very heavy reliance to external contractors for day-to-day -day operations and project execution, increasingly um, spending on technology in the past few years. And for the daily operations, the technology infrastructure and the system does not very stable and uh, experiencing regular failures. And the regular, um, the, there's a lack of test environment, um, which also contributed the uh, system, put it in the production, causing uh, other uh, failures when moving to the production system. And uh, there's a, a general lacking of process and procedure um, need to be developed to actually for help desk, computer repairs, computer uh, installation, all these different procedures. And uh, one of the major thing is um, uh, IT, we really don't have defined performance indicators to measure um, performance. And you always heard if there's no measurement, we don't, you know, there's lack of performance. Um, for the employees, there's a, a little inefficiency in the organization and the, the skill sets was um, uh, lacking in some areas, and the, the technology um, permanent staff was uh, suffered a kind of low morale. So to address all these observations, Ms. Duna led the IT department and the business area to prioritize <laughs> some of the projects, uh, sizing the technology spending with the prioritization of the projects, and uh, deploy some of the system we already purchased uh, throughout the years. And uh, for the daily uh, operations to s stabilize the technology infrastructure and the system, and uh, also set up these major test systems to testing the system before we move to production to reduce the failure when they put it in the, uh, in the production system. And also develop a standard operating procedures and a service level agreement to improve our delivery of technology service to internal and external customers. And also starting really defining the um, IT key performance indicators to start the performance management process. And for employees, we developed the core competency in-house. We realigned the organization to recruit necessary skill sets and uh, uh, really establish ownership for full-time employee by engaging them through the, the project delivery services and uh, also providing competitive salary to attract and retain qualified talents. So as a result of all the assessments and uh, strategy of solutions, um, we aligned the technology resources better with business needs. Um, through the project prioritization, we de-scope the sum of the project. One of the example is the uh, smart car reader upgrade project. Uh, originally, it was uh, valued about um, eight to ten million dollars. It's a hardware upgrade. It costs us a lot of money. After we assessed the, the project scoping, <laughs> we uh, decided to go with a software-based um, um, upgrade, which reduced the cost uh, tremendously. Um, the other things we talk about is instead of looking at a upgrading the system, uh, instead of replacing a system for like customer service center, we actually upgraded the system, which reduced the cost from a million dollars to around $100,000. Um, in addition to the project alignment, we also working with the resource alignment to establish the core competency. I talked a little bit earlier. Then uh, in the uh, January of this year, we uh, uh, did an a in-house IT customer satisfaction survey for all the business areas within our authority. And uh, we identified the three key areas need to be improved. One is the service desk, one is the um, technology infrastructure, and then the business application. We are um, continue to uh, improve these areas to m align the, the technology with the business needs. 
So as a result of the alignments, there are some improvements um, is visible. Uh, one of the things is uh, what we did is we redistributed some of the storage and server configuration to stabilize and enhance the performance uh, for the Breeze system and a number of other systems like e emails, exchange, things like that. And we also used to be, we, we experienced a frequent like fair game malfunction and that was resolved. Um, there was a couple years ago, I think we had a, uh, suffered some credit debit car processing failure during the Labor Day weekend, and the past Labor Day weekend was uh, pretty stable. And uh, we added the zip code verification for Breeze vending machine and the website to greatly reduce the, the fraudulent um, charges on our, um, you know, coming back to MARTA. And we're also reviewing um, maintenance contract for infrastructure to validate the usage and also try to, to um, uh, negotiate better rates and uh, continue with the cost savings. On the software side, we actually implemented uh, the Trapeze Blockbuster Events Run Cutter module for scheduling and planning. Um, if you in transit, you know the scheduling department determines the whole uh, schedule, roster, uh, where things run. And uh, this is one of the module we implemented so they can actually run different scenarios and um, to for different union contracts, things like that, and they can determine cost saving factors and actually have a very optimized scheduling system for MARTA. Um, under the KPMG, there was some recommendation about um, um, to actually reduce inventory things and uh, the self-service, and we in turn implemented the Oracle eye supply and eye sourcing for contract procurement department. So. There's a, um, we can now the, uh, the, some of the vendors and our buyer can really collaborate on one interface of our system and to reduce the administrative costs and also to actually reduce some of the investment on the inventory. And uh, we rolled out the self-service for managers and employees. So uh, right now all the W-2 forms, uh, pay stubs and uh, all kind of a different I, um, HR requests is actually submitted through the Oracle system and both of them are in the uh, KPMG recommendations. And we are really excited to roll out the, the on-the-go app with the real-time bus and uh, rail information in November 2013. It's available on iPhone and Android and it's developed using the internal resources um, I, based on a survey conducted by our research analysis group, um, about one third of our rider actually uses smartphone and about 90% of them actually downloaded our app. And I just went to the system check last week. We have uh, about 100,000 uh, download on the Android and uh, close to 80,000 on the iPhone um, for all the people using our um, on-the-go app. Um, backing up to the um to the HR system, the Oracle. How much of, of what the Oracle system now does was done manually or with paper before the implementation here? Pretty much all this um, process for I recruitment for uh, the pay slips and the direct deposit changes, the text withholdings, the Bluetooth, and the change of your personal information tuition reimbursement request, um, the exit interviews, the, the different kind of a retirement notice, all these different features all were done manually uh, through forms, things like that. These all through, right now is put it in Oracle system and flow through the workflow of the Oracle system. So when, when was Oracle implemented again? Um, I remember it was uh, um, last, there was a couple of days. I think July was the I recruitment. I, I have to go back check on the day. I think it's around November, December timeline. Of two I, of 2013. 2013. Um, you mean that just the module? We implemented the Oracle, the the base in 20 uh, 2006, right. and then the continue adding on to it. The self service employee, I think, is December 2013. I have to go check, yeah. But, I mean, I guess how recently was how much of it, it's, this is, it's kind of a, how, how recently was a, a significant portion of this done manually? Not recently or? 
It's been manual all along until we started implementing the self service. In the past. In the, I, I guess uh, what I'm really searching for is how recently. Well, one of the, I think the one that got the most attention for us was on the pay stubs. That I believe the pay stubs went from us giving out 4,500 pay stubs every two weeks to zero around November of last year. Who, who gets a pay stub in here? <laughs> that sounds right to you all? Yeah. About November. And that's when we started rolling out a number of these other self-help uh, automated functions. So, so by by and large, we went fully automated around November 2013. I think then. that's about a, around the time, and and then little steps along the way too. So, right. but most uh, most of this full optimization of Oracle in the past year or so. Very good, um, Senator Fort. Let me ask you a question because I see in your presentation, and you, you mentioned it that you brought. Some of this was being uh, contracted out, correct? And now it's being brought in. How m how much money was being being spent on the outside contractors? And when you bring that in, you know, what is the budget for it in house, and how many employees are doing it in house? Do you have that information? Why don't I start, and then mm -hmm. you want to okay, add to that? Sure. We, um, when I got hired, one yes. of the first things I did was look at the budget and looked at all the different major activity areas, whether it's in operations or HR, and then saw the IT spend, and IT was going up higher. The, the, the increase in spending was greater on IT than any other area. Yet, when I even asked the IT staff, customers, and anyone else, no one was happy with it. Not, not a soul would say we were pleased with where the IT services were and what we were getting for our money. And one of the things I looked at was how many people were in IT who were actually direct modern employees versus the contractors. And the direct modern employees was relatively flat, but the contractors was just going up exponentially. So what we were able to do was identify, and as, as Ming described it, we started bringing in core competencies, because you never want to contract out your core competency. That, that, that puts too much power and control into folks who uh, uh, may not have MART as a number one objective. So we have reduced, I believe the last number I saw was somewhere in the neighborhood of 50 some odd positions of those contractor positions were eliminated while we uh, only added a handful of new direct MART employees but gave ourselves a lot more control and uh, shaved down costs. So the overall cost savings from those positions is still being recognized, so we don't have a firm number because we're still it's still moving, it's still moving a little bit. But the overall savings, and unfortunately, I kept telling her to cut her presentation. And in fact, I cut the slide that had the the uh, details on there. But just under 14 million dollars was saved from 56 million down to 42 million, and part of that was contractors. Part was the some of the uh, uh, going from hardware to software enhancements and so forth. So we've been able to find it in a multitude of different ways, but the overall quality now of, eight, of IT is significantly better while cost has gone down. And morale is getting better, because that was a big deal. When people sit next to folks who make a lot more money than them for doing the same job, you know, you, you get morale issues. May I follow up, Mr. Chair? You, so insourcing saved money, more control over core competency, and had benefits. Yes, in this instance it is. In this but instance. Th though we still have very solid contracts sure. with, um, with, with third party groups and that sort of thing. So we, what we think we've done now is balance it the right way. So expertise that we need uh, sparingly or for a particular project, we want to keep that with contractors. <laughs> but for day to day, just you know, the, the basics, help desk and that sort of thing, we want to have that as in-house as possible. All right, thank you. Who's 23, Representative Geisinger. Thank you. Uh, I'm curious, you were talking about the app. How do we get to that app and uh, what is it? Because you don't, you don't have anything stated down here as to. Oh, uh, the uh, app you can download from the iPhone uh, store as uh, just, just type MARTA or on the go. 
And then on the Android, the Play Store, and you just uh, type Marta, and that will show up, and you can download it. And it's uh, it's just what I said is like 90% of our riders doing the survey we did last November almost download our app, and the, the feedback has been overwhelmingly good. I'm sure it would be. <laughs> and it's free, isn't it? Thank you. And I, I mean, I'll certainly say I, I, I think this is just one example of many, you know, the, the ridership experience um, and the quality of life on the system is much better these days than, than it really has ever been. And that's a, a credit to the work that, that you all are doing um, at, at, at MARTA. I mean, it, it's everything from the, the, the cleanliness of the system to uh, a, a, a notice, and I've Frankly, I, w one of these days we'll get Chief Dunham down here to, to ask how it's being done, and I know you can't give us too, you can't be too specific in the details, but um, but uh, there's a noticeable, I think, uptick in police presence that may not be more officers, but how they're, de it may just simply be how they're being deployed, but definitely noticeable. Um, obviously, the the cameras on the on the buses add to that. Eventually, we'll have the cameras on the trains as well. Um, but all in all, the system is cleaned up and 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 feels a lot different uh, today and recently than it has uh, in the past. So, I, and ride with respect, of course. I don't and and there, I've, I've not recently observed any knucklehead behavior. So. <laughs> Um, and I, I, I didn't come up with that term, term on my own, by the way, for <laughs> anybody following along at home. Um, but uh, in any event, I, the, um, the, the, the on-the-go app is part of that. And, and in fact, I, I just pulled it up on my phone. I mean, we, it, I've, I've, I use it on the system. It's, okay. it's helpful when you're not within eye shot of one of the screens to you know be able to tell when the next train's coming right there on your phone and it's and it and it's true as well so the couple of times i've used it recently it's been helpful so Great. and uh, since we're talking about signs um i think one of the big complaints we got before is not all the signs are working so when we started to working on the signs in uh, uh, february 2014 and uh, um i i think you probably already know this the signs actually are owned by the cbs outdoor um, and they kind of bought it from the, the uh, company signpost. And they, uh, during the transition, they lost a lot of uh, source code associated with sign. So our IT uh, engineer actually, uh, they designed the, the screens you see right here for the MRI signs, which they have, uh, they reverse engineered some of the signs to um, the source codes to actually start to display the, the signs. Um, so as of last week, we checked, there's a, we went from 37 working to 78% is working. In addition to that, in June, we uh, put the new signs the, at the Buckhead um, uh, station, and there was a, I don't know if you can see the picture in the middle, that was actually the entrance sign at the Buckhead Bridge at one end. And then uh, the one on the right hand side of the picture, that was uh, going to be the future Limber uh, entrance sign, which we are uh, targeted to put in, in October this year. And uh, um, so with all the improvements, we want to talk a little bit about all the future initiative, and we're really excited about that. I'm glad Charles from Greta is here. So we're actually working with uh, 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 Greta, Cobb, uh, Gwinnett, ARC, and Streetcar, uh, Atlanta Streetcar, to really working on the, the Breeze project and the programs. Um, Breeze, since we put it in the system, uh, in 20, uh, 2005 is truly like a regional system. So with the board approval uh, last month, we're going to move forward with the regional uh, BVM, that's the vending machine upgrade, which each agency is going to have their uh, individual help screens and along with the Spanish languages. Uh, we're working with the uh, Transit Management Association to enhance the, the partner uh, web site. So right now if you, um, if you are a regular, uh, you, you are a rider, you, you buy the, the um, uh, breeze from the, the Transit Manager Association, you need a one car for Marta and a one car for Grata. 
and we are actually uh, working on to merge that together so people riding Greta and Marta, they can be using just one car when they get from the, the transit management associations. We are working with Greta and Cobb on some of the fare increases they have upcoming. Um, uh, streetcar on their fair collection system and uh, eventually we have to integrate them back to the regional BVM system uh, we are actually upgrading right now and uh, there's a uh, talking about our breeze uh, my fair system and our ultra light system actually these uh, encryption in these keys uh, in these cars and tickets are um, a little old, so we are looking at upgrading the Breeze cars to uh, a new generation of more secure cars, and uh, the tickets, we will put it back next year, it's going to be more secure also. And in the model, we're exploring different fair options for holiday pass and things like that. And one of the really exciting uh, initiatives we kicked off uh, last month with Keys and the regional partner is the mobile fare payments. Um, for the riders, it's sort of like self-service. You can, uh, just like your app on the go and the CSA, you can buy in your Breeze fares in the, the, uh, on your phone. And uh, for MARTA, we can reduce the cost of handling cash and also it's e much easier to do upgrades than the BVM system, which is a very tightly closed system um, actually provided us by Cubic. And uh, on the mobile and the web upgrade side, we are uh, starting the itsmarta.com uh, upgrade uh, for the websites and also I think right now you know, you kind of know the website wasn't as um, mobile device friendly, so we actually are working on um, having the new site and a more mobile uh, device friendly. And uh, for the trip planning system on our website, we are looking at it to introduce the, the real time, uh, um, you know, trip itinerary planning via the web and also using the smartphone. And for our customer uh, service center, we are upgrading their. Um, a call center software along with the um, to introduce the self-service um, features in the um, the system so the patron don't have to call back they can actually go online and check the status of their feedbacks or comments on our model system um, I think there was a lot of talking through the years about the cellular and the Wi-Fi system on MARTA. Um, MARTA, as you know, we have a, a 15 underground stations and 10 mile tunnel, and the uh, cell phone reception, some of them does not exist in these areas. Some of them are, depending on your carrier, it's kind of weak. So MARTA, we are right now, in the, in the past, we actually uh, issued RFPs, RFIs, and the result of really no good bidder on this uh, service. So we are trying to do, a, you know, to do more analysis and to try to approach this a little bit differently this time to look at the neutral host providers and uh, also maybe look at uh, what is the cost for um, MARTA to do it and maybe a combination of two. We are really doing the cost benefit analysis right now and to try to de develop a strategy for that. And uh, throughout the years, MARTA, we uh, just for the cameras on vehicle project and uh, for some of the other projects, we have established uh, um, Wi-Fi services for MARTA's use. So right now we are looking at to see if we can open up these services for patrons, not to interfere with uh, our um, you know, system when we need it. And these are the things we're exploring, both at the stations and on the bus. And uh, um, this is the last slide. I think you probably heard all the data breaches uh, in the news lately. I think JP Morgan just kind of uh, say they got hacked last week and a couple weeks ago, uh, 50 UPS store, you know, got a data breach, and uh, everybody probably heard of the Target data breach um, around Christmas time it impacted about 70 million um, um, gift card holders and credit card holders. So at Amada, we are doing all we can to try to, to you know, stay on top of the game. We are um, segregating, um, networking, and use all kind of software, hardware tools to actually help us to preventing uh, the attack. And for our um, free system, we have uh, millions of transactions 
every year and uh, have a lot of credit card uh, information flow through our system. So for that system, we are um, we have done the Bank of America um, external kind of uh, assessor to give a certification, uh, what we call the payment card industry certification. The payment card uh, industry are consists of Visa, Master, uh, America Express, Discover, and Diner Club. They form a, a, a certification request for any major credit card holders to um, to go through these kind of certification and it has to be done by the external assessor. So last year we did a one with the Bank of America, we did a one with Visa, we did a one with the Bank of America's processor uh, first data and uh, we did a one I think uh, um, for the personal identification cards. So we are doing a lot behind the scene to secure our um, patrons information and really you know, with the mobile and the cloud computing and the teleworking, these programs, it adds additional challenges for cybersecurity. So we are working with our risk um, management team and to really come up with a, a assessment and develop a strategy. And we're looking at things like a cybersecurity insurance world to actually further protect your model from any cyber breaches, things like that. So I think that's um, all the things we have uh, uh, as far as uh, the, um, you know, all the initiative underway at MARTA. Any questions? Representative Geiser. Uh, you were talking about changing the, the cards. Have you considered smart cards? Yes, they are. Um, currently, the Breeze system is a smart car, but they are. Uh, well, they, they have different grades of smart car. The one we're using is called a MyFair Classic, which has been around for uh, quite some time, and it has uh, uh, well-known vulnerabilities. So we are moving to what are called a Death Fire EV1 car, which is a newer uh, kind of a um, standard. So it has less vulnerabilities. Similar with the tickets, they are more disposable tickets. They have a different kind of a, a encryption algorithm, things like that. Uh, we are used, uh, moving from ultra light to ultra light version C, which is also more secure. I'm sure that this card I have in my wallet won't work. Uh, it will. It will be backward compatible, but uh, uh, you know, eventually we wanted to get a, once we finish the upgrade of the software, we, uh, these cars, we, when they come out, expire, we just take them out of the system. Well, it's, it's paper. That's why I was wondering. <laughs> I chose you how long I've had it. Senator Ford. Thank you. <laughs> Um, there's different models of Wi-Fi uh, along the way. Uh, you know, it used to be um, Wi-Fi can generate, uh, um, you know, revenue, and that was uh, um, a few years ago. And I think there's a lot of company went under. So for the new Wi-Fi service, usually uh, from other agency, what they do is they charge for advertisement. So it's free, but uh, you have to watch either 30 second or 15 second advertisement, and that's what you get your revenue from. And uh, sometimes, you know, a, a different model can, um, if you want to go extend a period of time, then you will um, kind of pay for it. So it's sort of like the, the model everybody we see around the industry is going that route. Thank you. Um, I would like to see an itemization. I think there was a s slide that was taken out. Why would you take the slide out? <laughs> <laughs> That's what we wanted to see. We, we, we'll put that together. And if I can, can I just summarize just a couple of things we did want to make sure we uh, left the, the committee uh, feeling in terms of the overall <laughs> summary. First, that we have made a lot of inroads in terms of cost savings and efficiencies and so forth. And Ming and the, the folks who are in the IT department diver deserve a great deal of credit for finding many of these savings. I mean, one, one we didn't mention was when I first came in, we met with some of the staff members and got presentations from outside vendors, and they were saying, to get this real-time rail app that gives you the real-time information of the subway system, which is extremely difficult because when you're underground, it's hard to, 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 the phones don't work and that sort of thing. 
So they were saying a million to two million dollars to get that implemented. Our folks did it in, in house for somewhere between fifty and a hundred thousand. So dramatic changes in, in savings and some of those things. But uh, one of the other messages I wanted to certainly impart on you is that we know we have to continue to be cool to attract new folks. So the mobile payments, the um, a new Avis system, we didn't talk much about that, but that's where we're going to revamp the audio visual inside the stations and whatnot so we can connect directly with Amber Alerts and the Weather Channel and all host of other information so people can get real-time info about what's happening outside of the stations while they're, while they're in there. The Wi-Fi on the, on the uh, trains, Wi-Fi on buses, all those things attract new people to the service. So we think continuing to be cutting edge is going to be neat for us. And we are, again, featured today uh, in the AJC for video analytics, where we're going to be one of the pioneering transit systems of the nation who's taking on these new ways of monitoring behavior of what's happening uh, on our system. And then the cybersecurity thing is a big, big deal that we hope we have to rarely talk to you about because everything from people stealing the credit card information to bad guys who may want us to try to run trains in each other. So we have to be very vigilant in terms of trying to put up as much, as much protection as possible for the system. And that happens behind, you know, that happens in the offices working with uh, folks in Washington and working with our local police department and so forth to try to head off any bad behavior. So a lot going on in IT, and we, we just scratched the surface here, but we'll get you the additional uh, itemized information as well. Representative Mitchell. No, I was just sharing with the, the chairman here. I, I, I see a business opportunity. Uh, perhaps you know we can corral those employees that can do that, and and one what is it the one twentieth of the cost it would cost if you went somewhere else. We can package that. <laughs> the, the Billy Mitchell program for uh, IT services. We can market this uh, to transit. Up my cost though. <laughs> they don't want more. Um, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I, I would, and certainly, I, as you know, I've, I, although I have been a um, proponent of outsourcing, I certainly can see uh, circumstances in which uh, bringing uh, in certain functions um, makes some sense, particularly when you have um, uh, contracted out too much, and that seems like an, or I'm sorry, IT seems like an area where that could happen. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, any kind of work with contractors uh, needs to be well managed from the inside, uh, and uh, and this is an area where certainly we would want to see that. So, um, so I would be interested in seeing the cost saving uh, numbers and uh, and as well. I mean, I, I I didn't really see any areas where. Um, where this would apply, but uh, but there are certainly opportunities uh, to uh, you know supplement uh, the the revenue that Marta would receive with with something that's that's non traditional um, in the in the technology area. Um, so as uh, opportunities uh, like those present uh, themselves, uh, I certainly would appreciate information about that as well. I didn't see any in this presentation in particular. And there are some opportunities. In fact, as, as me mentioned a few years ago, people, some of these companies got themselves in trouble promising too much revenue to... Or, or I mean, I guess my, my point was that it seemed like there are some opportunities that, 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 that showed themselves in this presentation, but nothing that is currently happening, I guess. Well, on the Wi-Fi and even the cellular connectivity, there may be opportunities for us to collect revenue on those, but that's part of what we are testing by doing an RFP and, and doing some side-by-side -side tests or, or comparisons with, uh, with different vendors. So, right. so we'll learn what our we'll learn what the what the market will bear. If you so. if you can keep us posted on that, that would be appreciated. And then on the actual cost savings that we've managed to achieve, you know how that's been done, and then quantifying it um, in that slide that that didn't quite make yeah, it would be greatly appreciated. We will do that. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Anything further from members of the committee? Seeing none. Um, Second item on the agenda is the uh, presentation on uh, 
Medicaid paratransit rides, which uh, sounds like uh, it was going to be couched a little bit differently than how it's couched on the agenda, and that's perfectly fine. So why don't we go ahead with that presentation? Thank you. Good afternoon, Chairman Jacobs, members of the committee. I'm Knox O'Callaghan, Martis Director of Grant Programs, and I've been asked to provide you with a brief review of issues related to the provision of Medicaid trips provided by Martis Mobility Paratransit Service. First is initial background. The Federal Americans with Disabilities Act regulations cap the fare that public transit agencies such as MARTA can charge for standard paratransit trips at twice the regular fixed route fare. MARTA's current fare for a one-way paratransit trip is $4, which is slightly less than twice the $2.50 regular fixed route fare. MARTA's cost uh, on average to provide a paratransit trip is approximately $42 per one-way trip. Federal ADA regulations do allow transit agencies, such as MARTA, to negotiate a higher reimbursement rate for, quote, agency trips, that is, paratransit trips that are sponsored by another agency, such as the Department of Community Health. In our state, the Georgia Department of Community Health, through its transportation brokerage system, provides for medically necessary transportation for any Medicaid client. DCH's Medicaid program utilizes transportation brokers with the state divided into four, five service regions. The brokers are paid on a negotiated fixed capitated rate based on each eligible Medicaid member residing in their regions, irregardless of whether those members take how many trips they take. Southeast Trans is the current broker for the Atlanta region, which is Fulton and DeKalb counties, as selected by DCH on a competitive basis. Since the early 2000s, MARTA's paratransit system has experienced what is referred to as trip shedding by the DCH transportation broker with a resulting financial cost to MARTA. A 2004 study requested by MARTOC, documented that in many cases, Southeast Trans refers the Medicaid client to MARTA Pair Transit and purchases the fare media for that client. The study indicated that Southeast Trans was receiving, on average, the equivalent of approximately $17.25 per trip for all client trips provided across the board, not necessarily just for those trips provided by MARTA. And as previously noted, DCH compensates Southeast Trans and all other brokers on a per capita basis rather than on a per trip basis. Based on MARTOC's request and the study findings, MARTA and DCH began a process which led to rate for reimbursement negotiations between MARTA and Southeast Trans. The DCH Southeast Trans contract determined that this rate should be in a range between $14 and $22 per trip. But in order for MARTA to actually receive this higher reimbursement rate, DCH and Southeast Trans required MARTA to enter into a subcontract agreement, as they do with all subcontractors, public or private. And such agreement would contain several onerous provisions which would place an unreasonable burden on MARTA as a public transit provider. These objectionable requirements included, but were not limited to, the imposition of liquidated damages, as well as different pickup and delivery standards, which do not fit MARTA's service model. Li liquidated damages for what? For failure to meet the terms of the contract, such as uh, if we were uh, late, late for a trip or whatever provisions were in the contract, beyond. Uh, and and this was a requirement DC, uh, uh, well that both DCH and the provide and the broker were yes, placing sir. on w would have required of Marta in order to be reimbursed at the full rate. Yes, sir. 
because in order to be reimbursed, we had to enter into a standard provider services contract, which include, would have included those provisions, including liquidated damages. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. okay. the, um, the current situation, so the parties uh, would and uh, now is that is that a situation that or okay next slide is current situation right um, sure. what I mean is that a an impediment that still exists to this day uh, yes sir all right and is there a is there a requirement in the law either federal or state that that would require that that things like liquidated damage or something like liquidated damages to be included in in this contract I mean is it is it a legal requirement or is it just simply uh, is it regulatory what what is it so, yes um, the requirement for the liquidated damages it is a, um, a much narrow window so say for a five minute late trip that's that arbitrary provision that's put in the DCH contracts. The federal ADA regulations allow a half hour window on either side of a trip time. That's the time frame that has to be met. But this is um, much more onerous and there really is no, it's not a legal requirement. All right, but so the federal requirement is, is a 30 minute window on either side. Yes. Right, so would, let me, I guess the next, Naturally, the next question is, if, if MARTA were held to the federal requirement. And that is what we tried to negotiate with um, Southeast. So you would have been comfortable with it. Yes. All right. And, 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 and I'll just add to that. Very importantly, they still, con not, not contract, they just buy the trips from us currently. So the service is good enough that they are still purchasing many, many trips per day, per month, per year. At four dollars a trip. At four dollars a trip. So it's good enough for them to provide, for us to provide the service for their clients right now. Um, Liz, can, can I see the federal law that, sure, I'll get you that, copy of the ADA rate. Right? Or the reg or whatever it is yes. that, that, that requires the 30 minutes on either side. That would be helpful. Thank you. So currently, as we were unable to reach an agreement, as Mr. Parker said, the, the broker, Southeast Trans, continues to channel Medicaid client trips to Marta Paratransit. While Southeast Trans could discharge its Medicaid responsibilities to DCH by simply purchasing a $4 paratransit fare and referring their client to Marta, Marta continues to bear over 90% of the cost of providing these Medicaid-sponsored trips. As MARTA is presently constrained from obtaining a more just and reasonable per trip reimbursement rate from the DCH broker, these Medicaid sponsored paratransit trips are being heavily subsidized by Fulton and DeKalb County taxpayers. A potential solution. You have a question from Senator Ford. Yes, I'm sorry, I'm, I want to make sure that uh, I understand this. If it was done your way, how much would you all be saving? How much would MARTA save if it was done your way, the way you'd like to get it done? Well, well, there's going to be a slide at the end that will show some numbers. Mm -hmm. um, I okay. can say that we had agreed on a rate uh, between 14 and $22 a trip. So in that scenario, if that was still what DCH, uh, the parameters, if we could get $22 a trip, um, that is what over five times what we're getting now, four times. So, uh, we have a slide at the, at the conclusion, sir, that has some numbers. I can All right, go I'll, over. I'll okay. stand up. Thank you. Continue. So, uh, a potential solution to this issue could be for either the state law or regulation to be modified so that for public transit agencies. Who, such as MARTA, who are serving as subcontractors to for-profit Medicaid non-emergency transportation brokers, that the Department of Community Health should allow the federal ADA paratransit requirements to satisfy the DCH Medicaid NET service provider requirements. In terms of the 
financial. Uh, and 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 just to be just to be clear, the 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 five minute window exists nowhere in state law or regulation, right? It's just what the the it's just what the provider and DCH were mutually requiring to be in the contract in order for MARTA to take at the higher rate, correct? Yes, my understanding that, that back at that time, I'll double check that that's still um, applicable now, but um, back a few years ago, that was just the requirement. That was the way that the RFK fee was put out for the service, and so that was a requirement that DCH had. And, and when was the last time that this issue was visited with uh, DCH? Hold on one second. I have a, I have a member. Um, Representative Riley. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And Ms. O'Neill, you might need to answer this one. What impediment is there for DCH to contract directly with MARTA for these services? Why do we need to have a broker in the middle? Why can't this be a direct relationship? I, I think that's more based on the way that the, uh, the payments are made through the Medicaid system. Because it's not a per, they, they're not actually reimbursing anybody on a per trip basis. It's that per capita basis, and there's a formula that they utilize to determine that. Um, that's my understanding why they do not contract, or they cannot contract directly. So, Southeast Trans is providing rides across how large a, a, an area in Georgia? I think they have more than one contract. They do have the Fulton um, and DeKalb. So is there a Fulton and DeKalb specific contract? Yes. Now they're providing, a, but they're arranging a, is it a, a broader array of rides than just the sort of ride that MARTA would provide through the mobility yes, service? that's part of it as well. There are certain, I mean, certain rides that people have to be transported on stretchers and different rides that we would not have the capability of providing that type of service. So they have to offer a, a broader spectrum than we're capable of. But where they have someone that could partake of the mobility service, they're more than happy to just make right, that happen. Right, they're already utilizing right. MARTA for that purpose. I, I tend to agree. Um, all right, uh, thank you. Continue. And uh, the, the last slide, this appendix table, shows a preliminary rough estimate, a rough estimate of the cost of Medicaid trips provided by Martis Paratransit Service. For example, if you look at the FY14 row, Southeast Trans purchased about 25,000 stored value one-way paratransit trip fare cards from Marta at a cost to them of about $100,000. <coughs> If you translate each one-way fare card into a trip, these Medicaid-related trips cost MARTA approximately $1 million over the course of the fiscal year, as shown in the last column. So this uh, concludes my presentation. We'd be happy to we try to answer any questions you may have. <laughs> Um, <laughs> what, um, help me understand, with, with regard to the, to the arranging of the trip, help me understand the necessity of the broker when it comes to a, mobi a mobility ride. What 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 precisely is their role that's a, that that is that is I, I mean I'm looking at two things I'm looking at the issue of the reimbursement rate, and then I'm also looking at the middleman. I, I and maybe there's a reason that the middleman exists. Yes, sir. Well, th these trips were speaking. But 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 I I need that explained to me. I mean I I I I get the issue with the with the with the reimbursement rate, and that clearly is something that needs to be fixed. I'm what I'm probing now is whether the, the existence of the middleman under certain circumstances is, is necessary. Maybe it's required by... Yeah, and, and, and 
Mr. Federal Chairman. regulation. I just would prefer not to answer that on their behalf. So I think that would be. A Is there question. someone in the room who represents them? Yeah. Tom Bauer. I'll give you some information. I don't represent them. Okay. But uh, feel free to approach the. I'm interested. Well, I don't know if I'm that good. <laughs> um, I have several health care clients, and in, in particularly in senior services, as comes into play here. And uh, just to give you a little bit of history, uh, non-emergency, it's got to be for medical purposes, going to a doctor's office, kidney na dial, something like that. Uh, not that you're impaired and can't go to the store, for instance. It has to be something medical. But over the years, the Department of Community Health, probably maybe even back before it was DCH, had rising costs for these non-emergency medical trips. And so they turned to a capitated or a managed care, if you will, approach. So what they did, rather than reimbursing on a fee for service for each trip, is much like they have for about half of the Medicaid program now that is participated in by the CMOs, care management organizations. They are also paid on a capitated rate, not, you know, not depending on per, per service. So what the state has done is they have, I think there are three brokers for five regions. I don't know if there's a separate contract for Fulton and DeKalb, but I do know that Southeast Trends has North Georgia as one of those regions. But that's where the middleman comes in and how it came up, because they turned to a capitated or managed care mm -hmm. basis. So if that helps you. Uh, and also, uh, there is a, as far as the discrepancy between the five minute grace period and the 30, I don't know, but there is a standard contract that Medicaid has with its providers, and there's probably one. I don't know if it's different for like the health the CMOs as it is, the brokers, but there's probably one like that. But there's also a broker manual that has criteria in it that you might want to, the committee might want to look at. Or the committee might just want to talk to DCH because it is incredibly complicated. I, I can imagine it might be, and um, I certainly am not looking to go charging into an area where you know where it makes sense for the provider to be or for the broker to be uh, but I am very concerned about the about the the rate of reimbursement and how seemingly simple the fix at least in 2008 or 2009 most recently um, you know might have been um, I, I do think this is a an issue that ex that that merits further exploration and 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 potentially a fix, whether that's offline or through worst in you know worst case scenario through legislation. So um, we'll definitely continue this conversation. But um, that being said, uh, I, I hear I don't know if anyone has. Did you have your light on, Senator Ford? Yes, I do. Go ahead. You know I share your concerns, Mr. Chair, about this situation. Uh, particularly, uh, and I, uh, I know you don't want to get involved, Mr. Chair. You got more than enough to do, but it seems to me that this is, that this is not a scenario that uh, is best for MARTA, particularly when um, the taxpayers are going in their pockets for the fix to pay pay this off. But I have a question about the general paratransit program at the appropriate time, Mr. Chair? Sure. If, if this is it. Now, what is the status, what is the status of the uh, paratransit um, separate apart from this? Can you tell me, or Mr. General Manager, can you let me know what the status of the uh, paratransit situation is? Um, what I can do, we, we, we gave a presentation on that last meeting, I believe it was, to, to the MARTOC group. And I can just send you that that presentation, and yeah, it, we'll, it, it gave detail as to dates and, and that sort of thing. We'll have uh, the transformation initiatives on the agenda again within about a month, I would think, and so okay. I, I think it would be appropriate at that time, Senator Ford. Okay, I just um, don't remember off the top of my head because I don't want to okay. give any incorrect information. I that that's fine, Mr. Chair. I can wait. Uh, it's my understanding that there's some between now and then. There's some specific action that Marta's going to take, 
you know, regarding paratransit, which will happen before we come back well, together. Well, I, I think and in the last we, presentation they were transparent about that and that, that they're, you know, that an RFP was either being developed or mm -hmm. put out around this time. Um, and, you know, we do bring the issue back up um, every couple of months. So we'll, we'll, we'll have it up on the next agenda, I'm okay. sure of that. Do you, just one technical question. When is the RFP going to hit the street? And I don't want to give any incorrect info. I'll gladly, as soon as I get back to the office, talk with our the, the, the person who's doing the uh, overall direction of that for us, and we'll email that out to you. Anything further from members of the committee? I, I you know, I, I, I'm not well enough versed at this moment in how these brokers operate to have a, a strongly held opinion about their role in the marketplace. But I do, I think it, and I think all of us were able to pretty quickly develop a rather strongly held uh, opinion on the cost to MARTA. Um, of providing these rides, particularly when the fix um, for that seems relatively simple. I mean, I, I understand that the 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 you know that somebody somewhere may have an opinion about you know what a contract should say, but I, I think when that results in numbers this large, um, uh, you know, that are a loss to Marta. Um, we, we, we maybe need to take a look at, at heading in a different direction. So I, I'm certainly committed to that and uh, uh, strongly committed, in fact, to taking a look at that issue before the end of the year. All right. Thank you. All right. Um, next up is the website, atltransit.org. We got Kirk Fellstool with us today. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. And uh, hopefully, I won't mess this up when I try to switch. While I'm doing this, I will. Uh, so, so we wanted to give you an update on the, the regional transit website, which we're uh, very proud of. I do want to give the uh, get some direction from the chairman about we're we're planning to do this with screenshots, but I have the technical folks here. If you really want to see a live demonstration, we can do that as well. But I'll leave it to your um, your pleasure. Uh, the why don't you go through your PowerPoint? And we'll go from there. Okay. Good. Just let us know. Uh, We're going to have to suspend the meeting, Senator Ford. No, I won't. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead, Mr. Felstool. Thank you. Uh, members of the committee, I am uh, Kirk Felstool with uh, the Georgia Regional Transportation Authority. Uh, and we had reported to you in the spring about the status of this uh, regional transit website, uh, which is really uh, a product of the Atlanta Regional Commission plus all of the transit agencies, Greta, uh, MARTA, uh, Cobb, and Gwinnett. And as the chairman had said, the genesis of this was really uh, Senator Beach's idea to have uh, um, a, uh, an ability to, to plan transit uh, regardless of which um, transit agency that you're associated with. And so ordinarily when you embark on a project like this, and sort of Dallas is our, uh, the example that we, we had looked to, uh, in order to fully integrate uh, transit trip planning effort on a website, uh, it would take you about two, two years and $2 million to do it. Uh, and, but, but when the res joint resolution was introduced, it really gave a six-month window uh, and no additional budget. So it's really six months and, and really internal staff resources that we, uh, that we used. Um, and uh, the implication of that is that what we, what we did was that we used uh, open source free software uh, and that uh, 
was uh, a challenge for some of our staff, and they came through with, with flying colors. And I want to show you the look, but it will be reflected, I think, in some of the, uh, the discussion throughout. So the transit agencies work together to accomplish three objectives. One is that on a, on a single website, we could, you would, uh, a rider would have the ability to plan a trip across uh, all systems. The second is that uh, the rider could go and purchase a, uh, a pass, regardless of which transit system you're on, to pay for that trip. And the third objective is that you would be able to understand whatever the transfer rules are. And so a lot of folks had a lot of ideas that would be in addition to that, but we wanted to make sure we could meet an objective of trying to accomplish the website uh, by July 1st, so we stuck to those uh, objectives. And so what I want to do is give you some uh, basic screenshots of, of what it looks like and then kind of talk about the results. And by the way, we rolled this out uh, on July 1st. So this is what the, uh, the um, open face of uh, atltransit.org uh, looks like. Uh, after a lot of feedback from folks, we wanted to make sure that everybody knew that it was a, a, is a pilot project because it really was uh, an experiment uh, to see how well we could integrate all of the software and be able to uh, plan a trip. Uh, we came up with uh, all of the, the logo and the font and everything was all agreed to by the transit agencies. Uh, and really the premise is to most mimic uh, the regional fare product that we have is the Brie. So you'll see similar colors, similar font styles, uh, but that's kind of what the look is. And then if you look up at the top, there are icons. There's, uh, there's four icons. Uh, to the left, is uh, to be able to plan a trip. So if you click on that, it'll go to the trip planner that I'm going to show you. In the middle is purchase a fare. Uh, and then towards the right is the, are the transfer rules. Uh, and then uh, there are some additional uh, resources uh, to the far right. So before I show you the trip planner, what I want to talk about are the ones that are a little bit easier to talk about, a little less complicated. If you want to purchase a pass and you go to the website, you know what trip you want to be on, uh, and you want to be able to purchase a pass. You can go to the purchase uh, icon, and it will basically take you to the Breeze site because you're able to use Breeze on uh, all of the transit systems at this point. Uh, and if you choose not to use the Breeze card, say, for example, you were on a Greta trip and you didn't have to use MARTA at all, you would have two choices. One is you could use the Breeze card or you could use Greta's Fair Media. Uh, but you could purchase those uh, by simply going to that purchase link. And it really just takes you to, the, uh, to either the Breeze site or to Greta or to Cobb, which, or, uh, uh, whichever the case may be. The next icon is the transfer icon. And so it will tell you, once you, again, once again, once you've planned your trip, it will tell you uh, what the rules are, and the rule is basically that you pay on the first system that you're on and you get a, uh, then a free transfer to the next system. So for example, if you were going to ride on Express and transfer to MARTA, you would purchase the uh, Express Pass or pay the, the, the Breeze Media, you would transfer for free, and then coming back you would do the opposite. You would pay a MARTA fare and then you would transfer uh, for free onto the Express system. That's generally what is, is, uh, is the message on the transfer icon. Uh, the one that I wanted uh, to show you a few screenshots of is the ability to plan a trip. And uh, if, if you recall uh, when Senator Beach was first talking about the idea of the difficulty in, in planning a trip, he had, he had come up with a notion that he wanted to see how he would do a trip from Gwinnett County transferring to MARTA, or sorry, uh, starting in Cobb, transferring to MARTA, and then ending up on the, on the Gwinnett system. And he found it uh, difficult to do, uh, and that's because there are separate uh, trip planners, and there are various stages of, uh, their technology is in various stages. So uh, we used, in order to try to come up with a single trip planner, we used a trip planner that was really under development by the Atlanta Regional Commission. 
uh, for a wide variety of purposes, whether it was transit or uh, human services, transportation, or even walking. And we had them, in order to meet the deadline, really strip it down to a basic trip planner. Uh, and so this is what it looks like. If you were to open up the plan a trip and you're on a desktop, this is what you would get. And then just like if you were doing uh, MapQuest or Google Transit, you could, you would type in the start uh, and the end, and you would get this uh, kind of intuitive where the uh, um, trip planner is trying to guess what your trip is, uh, and then you'd click, you'd either type in your own or click on uh, the one that was most appropriate. You do that for the start and the end, and then at the end of that, you would get a a trip just, to, and it's a familiar face to what you would see once again on Google Transit or um, uh, MapQuest. You would get a map showing where you want to start and where you end. It would also show you, uh, you see those icons, uh, it would show you the transfer points, and it would also give you an itinerary, okay? And so it's a very familiar, uh, it's a very familiar look once you pull it up uh, to what uh, folks are used to when they're planning trips of any sort uh, on, an, on an Internet website. The other thing that you can do is uh, that when you go to the website, the website will predict whether you are on a uh, desktop or a mobile device. And if you're on a mobile device, there's, uh, it will take you to a, um, a mobile trip planner, which is a lot easier. It, the, it, what this does not have on it is the map. It's just because at in its current stage, it's a lot easier to load all of that if you don't have the map. And we actually had to go out and find this another source to be able to do trip planning from uh, mobile applications. But it'll give you the same sort of result. It'll give you an itinerary and tell you where to go. And so, uh, and it'll give you this, this is what the itinerary looks like. Uh, and so those are the, that's the basics of what it looks like. It, it, um, what I wanted to just let you know is kind of where we've come to uh, so we launched the site on July 1st without any fanfare. We, I guess folks call it a soft launch because we, we weren't certain uh, uh, because we were using free software and data that folks had supplied. We weren't sure how successful it would be. Um, um, and so, but it's been very successful. And so what we found is with, really with no advertising from July 1 to August 26th, we've had 6,000 visits with no marketing. Uh, but to just let you know, we were curious to know, is it something that happened all at once or what is the current state of it? And what we're finding is that the, that the visits are gradually building, so people are finding it useful. Last week there were 400 visits. In terms of what is occurring what people are doing once they get to the website. Once again, we're using a free uh, Google Analytics software so we can get to understand the basic analytics. And we know that 50% of the people who visited uh, planned a trip. 10% uh, uh, looked at the information on transfers. 13% uh, uh, found information on purchasing fares. 3% of those <laughs> ended up transferring to the, uh, to the Breeze system. And so we know people are using it, and you'll see these numbers, if we follow them over time, they are ticking up, too. Uh, and so we did two things to, because remember, this is a pilot, and we're trying to understand what the value is to the customers. And so we put some, uh, a survey, a, a basic survey tool on, uh, and we also encourage people to give us their uh, insights in terms of emails. Um, and. These generally, what the comments are telling us is that the, the website is well organized uh, and it's helpful. That if they could, the, probably the single thing that they'd like to see us improve is uh, there is some, because it's a free open source software, uh, some of the trips, some of the addresses that you would type in would not be there, although you can add them manually. Um, and so they would like to see improvements there. Um, and you would also like, if in terms of enhancing the website itself, there's a, there are, um, uh, there's a frequency of comments about folks that would be able to uh, like to have Find My Bus applications 
similar to what uh, Mr. Parker has talked about. So those are kind of the basic analytics. In terms of what our plan is uh, going forward, I think the transit agencies all feel very good about um, where we are with the project right now. Um, and the, we're involved, coordinated, I think, very well in working with the Atlanta Regional Commission. Uh, but there's, I think our next steps really are to produce a uh, business plan. Right now there's a discussion going on with the Atlanta Regional Commission about whether uh, who should in the future own the website. Uh, I think we have to develop a set of, of priorities with the transit agencies and the Atlanta uh, Regional Commission. I think our prime interest is in making sure that there are, is a set of metrics that we're measuring with this website that's responsive to what is uh, uh, to the customers. And so, for example, about improving the trip planner, I think that would be on the list of priorities. I, uh, I think improving the basic analytics so that we're understanding what people are doing. Those are some examples um, of how we would prioritize. And then we have been asked to come up with kind of a set of budget ranges from do it like you're doing it now uh, to uh, trying to do some a full-blown uh, version of a website. And so these are some kind of a menu of options to be considered about the different um, I think uh, Representative Riley, I think, characterized it when we were talking with her. She'd like to understand what the kind of the menu of options are for uh, what you can do with these websites. So if you think about it in these categories, one is really just continuing to have it hosted the way it is uh, with basically a, a staff person or a combination of staff people that are just trying to maintain the website as is. Second thing you can do is, is really get a professional redesign and upgrade the design of it. And then the third is uh, really enhanced features. And there's, if, you were, if you're just looking at what some of the comments are, um, integrating a real-time bus tracker is an example, improved trip planning applications, uh, the mobile app that um, Mr. Parker's talking about. But those are, that would be the, the bucket of enhancements. And so, We've, we've had the staffs talking about what those budget options would be. I don't think it's been vetted yet with our transit agency heads, um, but we'll be meeting next week to talk, or actually later this week, to talk a little bit more about that. Uh, the last thing I wanted to make sure everybody is, I, I think, orienting to is that the whole reason that we started this project uh, and the, the genesis of it was really to build credibility that the transit agencies uh, work well together in the projects that they, that they embark on. And so while, while Greta was identified as the project manager, we've, the uh, agency heads have met at least monthly to talk about the design. The staffs have met, and, and the Atlanta Region Commission as well, the staffs have met at least weekly. Uh, all of this work is accomplished because all the transit agencies are, are supplying the, the data We've got a couple of really smart technical people that are on staff that have worked well to solve um, a lot of difficult problems from a technical perspective. And so it, it should be seen, and I think it was in some of the newspaper articles that we saw, a great credibility building exercise for the, uh, for the transit agencies. I'm happy to answer any questions. Uh, I certainly would agree with that. and and would like to see, and I think we've discussed this with Representative Riley, um, you know, what the kind of menu of, uh, of, of costs would be for the future of this website. But it's definitely a good start, um, and I think we're all pleased with the, with the product, and it's one of those quality of life things, uh, this time more regional in scope, um, that moves the ball forward for transit really across the entire region. So. Uh, hats off to you, Mr. Felstool, and, and uh, everyone else uh, with uh, ARC and Greta who's uh, been involved in this project and the providers as well. Um, and uh, if I'll certainly entertain any questions from members of the committee. Seeing none, thank you for the presentation. I do want to make one point about um, we are, one of the projects we are working on very uh, closely with MARTA on is the Breeze integration. But I did notice a line there about um, 
Greta, fare increases. We are not proposing to increase our fares. <laughs> 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 right. That's okay. Thank you. Well, now that we have that all sorted out, um, we'll uh, probably do a, a meeting toward the beginning of October. Uh, certainly uh, the transformation initiatives will be on that agenda, and um, I'll take a look at some other possibility. Uh, maybe an up, a public safety update from Chief Dunham I think might make some sense um, in that uh, particular meeting. So, um, so that's uh, all we have for today. There being nothing more to come before the committee, this meeting's adjourned.